uh, I do a lot of stuff in, in public space, like uh, kind of that looks like graffiti, but it's not. Um, I did art school and I came out of art school um, and decided to go into public space, to leave my traces there, to leave my art there and, and to use my studio there as well. And, um, and to not so much focus on the classical white cube as most of my uh, fellow students were, were trained to do. And um, I put a lot of stickers in the streets, a lot of wall paintings and text and that kind of stuff. And uh, along the way, uh, by doing every project, I documented it and, and it resulted in new questions that uh, were the grounds for new projects again. And along the way, um, like about six, seven years ago, eight years ago, I, I moved to Paris and I, had, I collected a lot of friends that were in a similar kind of transition, uh, having a graffiti background and already for about 10 years or 20 years doing that kind of stuff and deciding to change uh, or to, by coincidence roll into um, new media, let's say. Um, leaving the spray can behind and uh, going for posters and stickers and, and different media um, or keeping with paint but deciding to not do text pieces anymore but more going into logos and that kind of stuff. And uh, by the time I came in Paris, this whole scene in Paris had trouble with the police. Uh, everybody got arrested and threatened, etc. And I came up with a kind of an alternative plan. Why not go anonymous? Like instead of writing your name everywhere all the time, why not um, just do a kind of an anonymous logo and spread it all around? And if we are with many people, you know, we, we create a kind of a, um, a cover for each other. This is another project that, um, that had a, a completely different approach. Um, I put, uh, I made a very small, uh, st this was a time that um, when I started doing this kind of street art intervention kind of things, it was like 95, 96 more or less. And it took like 10 years before everybody knew about Banksy and, and Shepard Ferry and all this stuff. So also when I started it, the streets were completely empty. There was just some classical graffiti tagging, but for the rest, no stickers, no stencils anymore from the, from the 80s, whatever. So. Um, but 10 years later, it was every electric box was completely covered with stickers and um, it became a, a, a very explosive culture. And even the city council started to uh, discover this as a medium, as a kind of a counter medium to the commercial things that they wanted to exploit. And so they decided to um, pay some, some people from the city council to actually remove all the stickers. Uh, every city where I went to put stickers in the streets, I documented the photographs and the aim was to make a, an, an animation out of it, like a film, a DVD, and uh, projecting it then in the art space that was my, my host, that, that was the one that invited me. And the longer the project went, uh, the bigger the, the, um, the collection became. Like uh, the last uh, one, for example, was, uh, let's say, in Eindhoven. And by that time I had nine animations, so you had, so this is one of the first, is this all individual stickers that you, that you see. There are about like uh, 1,200 stickers that were put in one week um, and photographed uh, individually. So, and I started to make uh, animations that um, uh, were counted by other animations. So you had this one from the city in, in Switzerland, together with uh, an animation from New York, or from Suriname in South America, or uh, Antwerp, or like uh, all the, the individual uh, stickers on themselves don't mean so much in this project. But, um, and you need to see the film before you understand that it's just one frame in, in, a, larger, uh, in a larger story. And, uh, and only after, I, in the end I did like nine, uh, nine films uh, that became one project and uh, like nine chapters somehow of, of one uh, story and um, somehow what is what is different compared to the other projects that I did in this case is like the the, um, the representation like through the, the animations and how it's put together um, 
really adds every time an extra layer to it. The fact, like, if you see one animation, it says a lot about like how one individual sticker works in one street compared to the next sticker that you can find on an electric box in another street. But um, at the same time, when you see this animation compared to the other ones, um, suddenly the, f the films itself become, um, again, like an extra way to compare the cities and, and the way to compare it is through all this media layer somehow. So this is Suriname, uh, South America, a little bit different than New York <coughs> or Switzerland. It was really hard to find any stickable surface. The only stickable surface I could find that is really working very good were uh, trash bins that were donated by the Dutch. So it was exactly the same trash bins I already put my stuff up before. And did you sticker it during the night or during the day? Uh, no, during the day. It's during the night you only get in trouble nowadays with all the cameras and all that. And if you do this during the day, people think you work for the city council or something like that. Or they think it's, oh, it must be from Red Bull or something, so it's okay. <laughs> so, but it's, it's interesting, you know, like, when I started to do this kind of stuff like 15 years ago, um, it was like, uh, it was the early days of that people started to criminalize everything and say, oh, it's vandalism what you do. And where like 10 years before that, it was completely accepted as, oh, you must be an artist or something because it's not commercial. <laughs> and um, so, and what happens now with the cameras everywhere, and they start to fix now computers behind the cameras doing facial recognition and all that. Um, sometimes I even put a fake nose on <laughs> when I do stuff in the street. But uh, yeah, you know, as I said with the project before, I got really in trouble because um, I, I had a show in a museum and I got caught doing the promotion of a stance in the street like the graffiti, let's say, the graffiti part. I got arrested and because of that, I got kicked out of the museum. And the result was that uh, after that, uh, somehow they took away the, the context of art. And then the only remains, how people looked at it, was uh, that it was graffiti or, or vandalism. And so it got kind of crippled. And there was, it was in Germany and um, then they started to do research about the project and they discovered that it was really a, a, a popular project by the time that it was happening in Hamburg and in Oldenburg and in Berlin and whatever, like 20 cities in Germany alone, but also in, in France and in Holland and, and all around. And uh, so they thought like, wow, you know, it's a, it's, it's, and it's a collective, it's a, these guys were with more people, so it's a criminal organization. <laughs> and so, so they started to experiment with these new laws that they made, these new rules, um, uh, it was after 9-11, you know, like it was 2003 or 4 or something. So they were really like enthusiastic to experiment on me. And uh, so I got plucked from the streets by silent cops and hijacked and all that. It was really, hey, I'm an artist, you know. It's, I'm just kidding. So the, the third project I, I'd like to, sh to show you um, is called uh, Plastic Bags as a Jolly Roger. It's, again, a completely different kind of uh, approach. There's a... Again, like a couple of years after, there's a lot of projects in between. But this is like um, uh, a couple of photographs that I, I like to show you. I um, started to collect this kind of uh, trash, uh, like uh, shopping bags that were just like uh, litter in the streets, drifting around. And I thought it was pretty amazing because they're relatively expensive. You have to pay like 25, 30 cents, 40, 50 cents for these bags. And they were everywhere. And I started to collect them, and um, I was looking for kind of a better place for them. And uh, because also in the time, like, you know, all the stickers I put and all the, the, the graffiti kind of stuff and the paint stuff, uh, the city started to remove everything pretty f fast. So the lifespan of the actual physical, the analog work, let's say, uh, became shorter and shorter. So I was looking for alternative ways to sort of expand the analog life. And... Um, so climbing buildings uh, makes it pretty, uh, pretty good uh, protected. I don't see a city council guy with his fluorescent jacket climbing up the church to remove my bag. It's hard to see, but it's this one. Yeah. Oh, it's, here. it's the tower of the Boymans Museum. So I had to get in there and dismantle the security things. 
This is uh, another bridge. It's like the, the ones you, you see here, they're all done in Rotterdam because they were all around like a, a, a tall uh, high-rise building where on the top floor I had a, a show and it was a gigantic view over, a panoramic view over the city and, but it, it was like 125 or 30 meters high and uh, so these were kind of like anti-references somehow. They, they were, uh, how to say this, um, the apartment was so high that you lost kind of the reference to the, the real street level that I'm normally working with and so I, I filmed these from the street and showed them in the, um, in the apartment, in the exhibition space. And uh, so, but I put up like about 25, 30. And, uh, and then sooner or later, the wind will rip them off and put them back in circulation again. <laughs> um, so I'm just like, you know, there's one chapter in his life, in the life of the bag, that um, is uh, kind of glorious. <laughs> so plastic bags is a Jolly Roger. Um, the Jolly Roger is a is the old old name of pirate flag before it was just the skull and bones. Uh, it's like every pirate had its own little mark to show that he was a real rebel or whatnot. And um, I thought like the, the you know like in the beginning as well um, the landscape that um, <laughs> that I I think it's the last picture of this. Oh, no. But um, the landscape that I, that I work in, the analog, you know, the city itself, um, it's very much dominated by the rules that are there somehow to protect the commercial aspect of the city. And um, using these plastic bags from, this, from the supermarkets that are very visible as well and all the traces they, they leave behind and, and, the, and the whole commercial, the, the, the consumerist kind of aspect there was also part of the fun of it to, to, to put this back. And kind of to bring it back to the theme of, of uh, tonight, like the kind of the, the, the kind of the, 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 the from the analog to the, the digital flip, is like the photographs itself and the films that I made, um, they, they are uh, kind of spread out, like I, you know, they're on the internet and, and people publish them in magazines and catalogs and whatnot. And uh, like the films are shown in, in, in art circuits. And through that, um, it sort of supports the myth of the idea that the plastic bag that you can see, that it's potentially not just litter that someone left, but it's done by an artist. You know, that next time you see a, a plastic bag somewhere, it could have been me or someone that did it like that. And it's, it's about kind of like the, it's, it's to address the moral aspect of what it is to be an artist in a city and that it's really different than being a graphic designer for example or a city planner that has completely different kind of uh, uh, responsibilities. It, the fact that I'm not allowed to stick, uh, put a sticker on a billboard um, that, you know, or even worse, you know like in the Netherlands um, you're not allowed as a private person to put anything in public space. You have to be a legal person. But, when I'm alone, I'm, I'm not uh, able to become a legal person, even to become a, f a foundation or something. You have to have a group of people, etc. And so it means that I'm cut out of my own landscape. When I go from my house to the, the, the supermarket, I cannot leave a trace. If I put my bicycle next to the lamppost, it's scratching. They can prosecute me for that. I think that's completely ridiculous. In my, and that's where in my art, my motivation and my, my engagement, political engagement comes from, let's say, is like, I think that everybody is entitled to use public space, analog or digital freely. And, well, that's, you know, that's, that's the thing. Like, of course, I will not put a sticker on your back if you turn away, you know, because I don't think that's funny. But <laughs> if you have a jacket with a big uh, Philips logo, it might be funny you know, to cross it. it. It really depends on the occasion, but it has everything to do with a kind of a, a moral kind of, uh, or an ethical kind of, uh, it's an ethical presentation, you know, somehow. Yeah, uh, flu01.com. It's F-L-U from Influenza. Zero one. Remember that it's not fluo e or fluoi or fluo one, but zero one. You can Google it. Okay. Thanks very much.